These are all arguments that we make to ourselves without even understanding what we're saying. They are cyborgs right now because they cannot exist without a piece of technology. In 2007, Apple comes to market with the iPhone. A lot of analysts missed it. They didn't just say it would fail, it would fail badly. For people, when it comes to technologies like augmented reality, virtual reality, and the end of smartphones, which we all know is coming, for people who are resistant, what are they not seeing about the future? They're not seeing that they are cyborgs right now. So they are cyborgs right now because they cannot exist without a piece of technology. They think that the technology is not embedded in them, but it is. It happens that you carry a phone in your pocket or purse, but the, the phone is embedded in you. You do not exist without that phone. I mean, the nightmare of anybody connected to data right now is to get that data wiped, <laughs> which happened to my daughter recently. <laughs> Her computer was wiped. But that's how you have iCloud. That's why you have cloud services. That's how you have Amazon Cloud. Like all of these cloud services, which become the new, the new phone. Uh, what people are missing is that every technology is fundamentally a bridge to the next technology. It is what human nature is about. We are seeking always the lowest energy state, manifested as industrialization, ro robots, uh, and so forth. And it's not us, this is not me saying it. This, we know this f forever. Every technology is a bridge to the next technology. Sure. And it just seems insane for people to think of life without their smartphone and but, until uh, you wake up and realize that was just the bridge to the next But where thing. is your fax machine? Right. <laughs> where's your home phone? <laughs> yeah, where's the, where's the Commodore 64 computer? <laughs> where's your Atari computer, if you even know what that is? No, so. I think you've lost us in this. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when you think about the invention of the smartphone I think was incredible. Like, it's nothing short of a miracle, but it was the smartphone, data, and the internet, three separate technologies that gave rise to most of the industries we depend on today, whether it's social media, Google Maps, FaceTime, email, anywhere. What do you think the combination of future technologies such as whatever ends up happening with the metaverse and artificial intelligence, what could be possible when those words, worlds collide? that it's hard for us to imagine right now. You mean collide or converge? Converge. Converge. Well, they converged before. So if you look at the, uh, I was mentioning my life with seven technology uh, revolutions. I, I wrote a while ago in one of my books this idea of the end of the beginning, that occasionally every couple of years, you get this moment in which you have the end of the beginning. So everybody now has everything that they needed to do to move to the next level. So augmented reality and usually this is the moment where, when Apple shows up with the best product in the category, when everybody is ready to do it, right? They're just extending their hand and boom, the iPhone shows up. So, so the converging technologies of social augmented and autonomous um, transform everything in the same way in which- and the what do you mean by social augmented and autonomous? Social right? meaning it has a story to tell, it has a name, Alexa, or it has Google or Siri and it has a, fun a social function. In other words, you think of it as a social entity. Mm -hmm. And then that social entity talks to you, it reads your emails in the car, drives your car, makes your um, food at home, uh, and so forth, takes your kids to school, and tells you when to wake up. That's way more than a nanny does, right? So then, that augments your life, because now you can do all sorts of stuff you couldn't do before. Not that you have time, but you have interest to do it. And then you have the autonomous functions of everything being autonomous, removing, again, chores, attention span, uh, behavioral sequence, uh, neurons. Neurons are important because that's how we age. Mm. <laughs> and that's how we, not, we, don't, we understand or don't understand things. So if you take this idea that at one point in the 80s, every office had to be redesigned to accommodate computers, and nobody said, why do we need computers? Because we need to process words, word processing. Whoa, and then we need to photocopy the words we process. Whoa, <laughs> and then we need to uh, store the data on some disk drive. Whoa, all of this stuff was sold at Staples, or Business Depot it was called. Those sections don't exist in the store anymore. So think of all the transformations that were implied in moving from all the offices have to have this, cable management, 
and noise cancellation, all of this stuff, uh, heat, because it was, it was very hot. And then you have to have scanners, printers, fax machines, and then they all disappear. Right. And that is in your, in your lifetime. So, so that's what I mean by things have converged and transformed, and it was the end of the beginning. So if I have right now the end of the beginning again, which is I have technologies which are social, take care of all my social image, you will never post anything. You will be essentially your presence here, if you allow yourself to be discovered, will be your posting. Everything happening right now will be happening on Instagram. If I, allow, if I allow myself to be discovered, so I no longer post on something like Instagram in the future, I am always discoverable. Yes, you are always discoverable. You are always uh, uh, allowing yourself to to tell the best story possible about this moment. How? Well. Select attributes. Select where you want to be seen from, what words should be used or not, and then the, the story is created automatically. Imagine you are not creating the story you post on Instagram. No, the story includes me today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it includes you. It includes exactly this table. So the attributes are very simple, very clear, right? And, and, and you will use them in your story of the, that you are posting later on today anyway, except that they will be automatic. So in a, in a combined world of the metaverse, artificial intelligence... So, so you will get a choice to look at the options, just like I look at my mm. uh, AI-generated uh, images, and select which story you would like to post. So you're saying AI would generate my social media existence. Yeah. And it presents to me, here is an image... Not only your social media existence, your emails, your responses, everything that has to do with everything you want to allow it to communicate to other people. And I think the... Um, and it will use the best language you can possibly use in every language possible. The immediate reaction could be for someone to say, look how much we've lost in that process. But then the response is, do I gain anything sorting through images to see which one was the best? Um, or do I gain more in terms of time back if AI just presents? Well, you discern, first of all, you start having a discerned palette of, now in other words, you educate yourself into yourself. Because right now, what do we do with it? Like, why do we take selfies for the exact same reason? Oh, look at me now. <laughs> look at me then. No, now. <laughs> so all of these things are not things that you ever grew up expecting of yourself. I'm going to take a selfie. But then, why is it more clear in people's minds why they take selfies? And the idea of uh, automatic posting, um, it's obvious. It's going to happen. Fifteen years ago, the selfie didn't exist. Now here we are. Why would things Five years stop? ago, yeah, ten years ago, the sel selfie did not exist. Mm -hmm. The selfie stick was the best-selling item of 2015. And when it comes to something like entertainment, the year is 2030, how am I experiencing a movie at home? What could be possible? I saw an interview recently with um, Tarantino, who was asked, is this your last movie? He said, I don't even know what a movie is anymore. <laughs> He said, uh, I don't know what a movie is anymore because he, you know, he, he realized that the, the big directors in Hollywood were completely against Netflix and completely against Prime and completely against Apple and so forth. Okay, look around today. Netflix is the largest movie producer of all time. In money, numbers and everything. So then you realize, wait a second, this has transformed what entertainment is because entertainment is not going to the movie theater and getting overcharged for Pepsi and, and, uh, and popcorn. It's not a night out with a family. It's a night in with a family. So all of a sudden, how can I reconcile OLED TVs and a gigantic uh, movie screen? I can't. Why would I spend time going to a movie theater? Like, how can that experience be better than home? Haptic devices. And then you can say, oh, but uh, it's about uh, uh, socializing with other people. That's not why you turn the lights off in a movie theater. They don't invent that dimmer for nothing. You don't want to socialize with other people. You're actually, you're actually not supposed to talk in the movie theater. Yeah, you actually want to tell other people, shut up. That the, the, so, so the thing is, these are all arguments that we make to ourselves without even understanding what we're saying. Entertainment in the future, it comes more to me. It's around me in my home. So and I, and, I, direct, I, and I direct most of it. We direct our own movies. Yeah. It is essentially, imagine the dreams that you have, being able to see them and actually come up with the best version of them.
He may say, how do I direct my own movie? We are doing this right now. We can go to, you watch Detroit, that uh, series, uh, the, the game, interactive game. You dictate what happens in that game. It is your course of action that it dictates. Now, should a movie be like that? Not all movies, obviously. Some people have a story to tell, and they should tell that story. But do I have to go to a movie theater to see that story? No. I can see it with my, right now with my Oculus Quest, which has a movie option. And I can feel, even that one is, has lack of imagination. I don't know if you ever used it. But you put Oculus and you are, and you feel you are in a movie theater, like you see the rows before you. Like, mm -hmm. and I think with technology in, in the history of entertainment, there was a time when movies had no sound, and or a time when movies were black and white. There are all these senses that we still don't incorporate. What about a movie that you feel in right. the future? So technology is limit, breaking down those barriers, and expanding what could be possible. Plus, uh, we seek pleasure by all available means. So it, well, right now we are seeking pleasure in a story, in the surprise of a story. But who is to tell what pleasure will be 50 years from now? What was pleasure 100 years ago, right? So the idea of seeking beauty in that form, or pleasure in the form of beauty, or pleasure in the form of food, or whatever, changes all the time because your palate changes. So that's it for my series of questions. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for being in the hot seat. Thank question you so much. Question. So what do you guys think? Thanks for having me. I'm letting me crash your class. Wow, that was very good. <laughs>